They certainly are. Thank you, Mark. We've seen uh, Nuno Espirito Santo and uh, his opposite number, Roy Hodgson, just tap four arms. The players are lined up in front of us. Crystal Palace in their traditional bl uh, red and blue striped shirts. And we're going to see the old gold of Wolverhampton Wanderers when they take their black tracksuit tops off. The Steve Bull stand on the far side is bathed in sunshine. And uh, we're, we're just missing 31,700 people uh, because there's 300 here. This ground is absolutely absolutely fantastic and so atmospheric particularly on on night games like this but uh, Wolves they stayed in seventh after Sheffield United's defeat so I'll go through their starting 11 for you in goal as ever Rui Patricio has been excellent uh, for the old goal the normal back three Willie Bolly Connor Cody the captain Leander Dendonka comes in for Romain Sice who drops out the wing backs returning are Matt Doherty and Johnny Otto central midfield as always Joao Moutinho and Ruben Neves and a front three Adama Traore who had featured at the right wing back position is now on the right hand side of a three uh, Jimenez down the middle and Daniel Podence who uh, Rob and Mark were talking about a few moments ago his third consecutive start now the equation for Wolves is straightforward two wins here against Crystal Palace and on Sunday at Chelsea and they will secure Europa League football in sixth place if they do finish seventh they will have to rely on Chelsea beating Arsenal in the FA Cup final to sneak in now they could still qualify for the Champions League if they win the Europa League and they are 1-1 in their round of 16 tie the second leg against Olympiacos will be here on August the 6th and Rob you mentioned a couple of big clubs that they could yet face they'll take on the winner of Sevilla and Roma in the quarterfinals and could face Manchester United in the semi-finals but we'll get to that uh, throughout the evening Crystal Palace 4-4-2 a couple of changes from the 2-0 defeat to Manchester United. So Vicente Guaita's in goal. A back four right to left. Joel Ward, Scott Dan, Mamadou Sacco. And a Premier League first start for Tyrick Mitchell, who came off the bench for the injured Patrick van Arnholt uh, against Manchester United. And impressed in the closing stages that he gets his first start, age 20. Central midfield duo of James McCarthy and James MacArthur. Wide midfielders are Andros Townsend. Jeffrey Schlupp comes into the side. Wilfred Zaha with Jordan Ayew up top and as the music fades on the PA system here at Molyneux we will see the players very shortly take a knee of course as we've seen before every game of the restart so far in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement Peter Banks blows his whistle all 22 players and coaching staff drop to their knees in a show of support and we're about to get underway. Jordan Ayew with Crystal Palace kicking from left to right. They won their opening game of the restart at Bournemouth. That was their fourth straight win in the Premier League without conceding a goal. Since then, the wheels have come off. Six defeats in a row, outscored 15-2. They've only scored in one of those games, but they're in the attack early on here. And Willie Bolly had to get the ball clear. And Rob Green, good evening to you. And we're looking forward to this one. Yeah, good break there by Arlo. What? Um, good evening, Arlo. Sorry, you not know, a good break by you. Good break by Schlup there on the left, and just won the knockdown from the kickoff and straight in, cross in, and yeah, frustration because it's a good ball into the six-yard box, and you need someone attacking that, and they weren't really on their toes ready for it. You might need a break from me after 90 <laughs> minutes, Rob, but uh, we'll see how we go. Mitchell has the throw in left-hand side for Crystal Palace, ten yards on the corner flag, finds the top scorer Jordan. Are you? He scored nine Premier League goals. Wilfred Zahar was in the penalty area, Andros Townsend too, but the move was broken down, and Connor Cody with his white boots sends the ball out to the right-hand side to Adama Traore. Such a powerful figure, but he's added lots of cleverness and sophistication to his game this season and you could regard this Rob as a breakthrough season for Adama Traore at the top level couldn't you? Yeah the questions were being asked and can he do it consistently and, he, and he's shown he, he can this season and uh, not only that he's improved and it, it's the choices he makes on the ball but also the positions he takes and you look at the guys he's playing with you look at it, you, it not so much for Dents but you, uh, Jotters and Martinos and looking at those guys what positions do they take up how can they get the ball what difference can I make when it's not just the pace and the power that I do have and and, he, and he's improved so much in that and it's a watch a massive bonus for Wolves Andros Townsend fouled on the right hand side for Crystal Palace just inside their own half it was Johnny who just clattered into him from behind so Scott Dan will take a free kick and he clips it towards the penalty area way over the head of Jordan R.U. and easy for Rui Patricio uh, 
Palace are going to persist with some long balls up to Ayu and Zaha. It's going to be a tough ask against these uh, the back three of Wolves because they're all sizable guys and uh, strong guys and they know that that's their strength and they'll play against that all night. Oh, he sends it forward. James McCarthy for Crystal Palace with the header back to Scott Dan. And it's Vincente Guaita who sends a clearance high into a blue sky here in the West Midlands. Lovely evening in Wolverhampton. Neither side really threatening by the goalkeeper so far. Two and a half minutes in, five live sport. Rob Green and Arlo White with you. Wolverhampton Wanderers nil, Crystal Palace nil. It's a poor clearance by Guaita. It had to be dealt with with an impromptu overhead kick by James McCarthy. But Crystal Palace get a throw in on the right-hand side. Roy Hodgson's got the ball in his hand. Leaves it for Joel Ward. Roy Hodgson says, I would defy anyone to say the results have been because of a lack of motivation, but they've been very poor, Crystal Palace. They just got to the fringes of the Europa League spots, didn't they? To within four points of fifth place, then since then, dear oh dear. Yeah, it's the hope that kills you, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> a tantalising touch for the Palace fans and then nothing after that. And it's uh, it's tough, but, you know, these these things happen towards the end of the season. It's, it's been a strange old run, hasn't it? But, you know, they look at it and they say, well, Premier League security, moving on, looking forward for next season, hopefully looking up and an improvement towards next season. Well, it's their longest losing streak since they lost eight in a row, which between May and September 2017 and it was that losing run that prompted Steve Parrish to fire Frank De Boer and in came Roy Hodgson, 72 years of age in his crisp white shirt, hands in his pockets in the technical area and here's Andros Townsend on the right hand side put under some pressure by Johnny, nice flick though down the line towards Jordan Ayew, Willie Bolly with the challenge, concedes another throw in, right hand side still it's all very tight down there. James McCarthy battling for the ball. Bounces kindly for him. It's an intelligent ball infield to Jeffrey Schlupp. He opens his hips and finds Mitchell, the uh, first start man for the Eagles. He clips a ball into the penalty area. Jordan Ayew looking to get a shot away on the penalty spot. He fell as he did so. and Didn't manage to test the goalkeeper. It was well defended in the end by Wolverhampton Wanderers. But Palace have started the better of the two sides. Yeah, it's a good, good bit of movement there from Palace. And a, a wonderful ball in by Mitchell. And he, he, just a deft ball into the box. Didn't try to whip it across. Just picked out his man Ayew. And it's just his first touch let him down that drifted away from him. And got cleared by the Wolves defence a break by Daniel Podence on the halfway line the short stocky 22 million pound signing from Olympiacos Raul Jimenez on the corner of the penalty area going towards the byline he attracts a couple of uh, Crystal Palace defenders they bundle the ball behind and it's Wolverhampton Wanderers who have the game's first corner it was James MacArthur who got back with the challenge Jimenez looking dangerous in the penalty area yeah sharp feet by Jimenez and it was a good ball and he's, he was Ward he just drifted out of position and he picked up the space He's so clever to see where the space is in the back four. And the quick feet wins the corner. Four goals in seven games since the restart for Raul Jimenez. The Mexico international, 17 in the Premier League this season. 26 in all competitions. And he's been absolutely terrific up top for the men in old gold. Moutinho will take the corner short to Johnny. Back to Moutinho. Johnny has it on the left-hand corner of the penalty area. Deep service towards the back post. Uh, Doherty was up there, falls here on the right-hand side of the penalty area to Jimenez, he tried to get the cross in, it cannons off a Crystal Palace defender and out for a throw-in, 10 yards or so away uh, from the corner flag, right-hand side in front of the Steve Bull stand, and this might be launched in towards the penalty area. Willie Bolly had stayed forward, he trots now out of the penalty area, back towards his normal position in the back four, and we'll try again with another throw in to Wolverhampton Wanderers. He left, he left the box there, Arlo, and then left Pedence on his own in the penalty area. He was about five foot dead. And so I don't think he put, posed much of a threat there in the box. That was quite a conservative move by Willie Bolly there, wasn't it? Wolves in possession just inside their own half. Here's Connor Cody, the Iron Man of Wolves. Played 90 minutes in all 53 Premier League, Europa League and FA Cup matches this season. Long ball forward was easy for Vincenti Guaita. In fact, Connor Cody's played every minute of the last 109 games. A, a man who started his career with his hometown team, Liverpool. He was a red growing up. I'm sure he'll be watching the trophy lift on Wednesday night. Jordan Henderson on that uh, new stage in the cop after the game against Chelsea. But he was sold off to Huddersfield and his resilience and character 
to forge a career at a big club like Wolverhampton Wanderers has been very impressive. He's been a breath of fresh air, hasn't he? He speaks so well and he, sp he leads the team so well. And it, this is one of the wonderful things. That if, one of the few wonderful things of playing without fans in the stadium is you can hear everything on the pitch. And Connor Cody talks incessantly throughout the game, giving information to his players, driving them on. And also, he knows that when he plays against the back four, he's got that ping, a diagonal ball into the wide man. And he can do that all night long. Wilfred Zaha almost picked his pocket in possession there, Connor Cody, but he found uh, Dendonka, the right centre-back, down the right flank now, here's Adama Traore sprinting for the first time, it's a deep cross, it's over everybody, it may go out for a goal kick, in fact it kills back in, and uh, Joel Ward keeps the ball in play, in field to James McArthur, who was on the left-hand side of midfield in their home defeat against Manchester United. Possession one back for Wolves by Ruben Neves. What a fantastic prospect he is at the age of 23. Joined the club in the championship. Lethal when taking shots from outside the penalty area. It's a terrific, dynamic central midfield partnership with Joao Moutinho, the more senior of the two pros. Here's Neves again, looks upfield in the centre circle. Rolls the ball out to the left-hand side to Willy Bolly. Johnny's on the touchline ahead of him, halfway inside the Crystal Palace half. Runs into Joel Ward, the ball pinging about. Bolly got a challenge in, and it breaks harmlessly from a Palace point of view to Mabadou Sacco. Infield to Jeffrey Schlup. Luka Milivojevic misses out through injury. He's got a knee problem. And Van Arnholt dislocated his shoulder, so they are the two changes for Crystal Palace tonight. Guay, Guay to, sorry Rob no Wolves don't start too brightly in, in a lot of games they don't score a lot of goals in the first half but you know they look fairly comfortable don't they and they're quite aggressive in their defence Willy Bolly going in high pressing up the ball and you're looking at Palace they get the ball and they just need to get their foot on the ball at times and just get that foot, one two three passes in just to steady the ship and then play from there whilst, they, in, whilst the ball's in transition they're looking at Wolves players and they're on them they're on them and they're pressing so it's good you know Palace when they do defend they defend well but they just need that quality when they win it back voice of Rob Green here on 5 Live Sport 0-0 nil -nil between Wolves and Crystal Palace in the Premier League tonight here's Mamadou Sacco the centre-back former Liverpool man for Palace just short of the halfway line and he floats the ball out to Joel Ward at right back it's a miscontrol by Andros Townsend who grimaces down in front of us as he concedes the throw in Wolves won their opening three games of the restart they're in terrific form West Ham against Bournemouth and against Aston Villa then they uh, stuttered losing two in a row to Arsenal here and away at Sheffield United so it was always from that point going to be difficult to hunt down the top four even given uh, Leicester City's stuttering form but they've since beaten Everton then drawn at Burnley it could have been interesting had Burnley not scored that 96th minute equaliser two more points on the Wolves tally and they may still have been in with a shout of top four but I think sixth place now with Leicester guaranteed at least fifth is what they'll be aiming for and then to progress in the Europa League when that resumes in August they're nice problems to have for Wolverhampton Wanderers <laughs> yes, it's, 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 it's been a wonderful season hasn't it and yeah like you say they just hit that bump in the road with the defeat and, the, and, and, the, and a couple of defeats in there and it's it's Oh, it gets so tight towards the end of the season and as an, as an ex-player you look at those games and the games get less and less and you're just trying to catch up just trying to catch up with guys and each result each little moment gets bigger and bigger and you thought with Chris Wood missing that chance in the last minute that that was Wolves off the hook and then they get the penalty and it's a draw and it kind of you're feeling that that's a chance gone this will Palace in possession towards the penalty area it's a ball slid through but then it goes uh, harmlessly behind but Tyrick Mitchell was the uh, closest to it for Palace, so he's very keen to get forward from left back. He was signed from the Brentford system when they closed their academy in 2016. Hasn't done Brentford any harm, it seems. <laughs> Although they blew the chance, didn't they, to go above West Brom into the second automatic promotion spot when they lost at Stoke City at the weekend. It was an incredible weekend of championship football and, and that's, that's what it does when, when the pressure comes. It, it throws up these results, both two of the top three teams both losing. Earlier on tonight, Brighton nil, Newcastle nil and Sheffield United nil, Everton won. Richarlison with the only goal at Bramall Lane, so Sheffield United stay eighth. They're on the same amount of points as Burnley. The perceptions perhaps of the two different seasons 
are rather different. Everton are in 11th spot and in the cricket, in case you missed it, and the Test Match special podcast will give you the whole story. England beat the West Indies by 113 runs on a thrilling final day. The Windies bowled out for 198. Palace in possession. It's all rather sedate at the moment as a lone bird flies across the scene here against a light blue sky. Mitchell chips it down the line looking for Jeffrey Schlupp. There's uh, Doherty, they've got the header clear. Now here's Prudence in the centre circle, looking to turn it round the corner to Jimenez. He puts some pressure on uh, Mamadou Sacco, and Jimenez has got the ball. Right side of the penalty, Eric cuts inside, then outside, tries a right foot effort, and in the end he couldn't get any power on it. He had two teammates to his left-hand side, but Guaita made the save at the near post. Yeah, tenacity there from Jimenez, and he beats three players. You know, that three players around, it bounces around, he just keeps going, keeps going, tries to get the cross in, runs out of room into Guaita's hands. But, you know, it's, it's been, you know, Palace will be fairly pleased with the start because they feared of getting blown away or coming to this to Molyneux and, and facing an informal scene they haven't really shown that the lack of form that they've had and they look relatively comfortable lovely turn by Podence wasn't it in the centre mm. circle to get away from James McCarthy but McCarthy wasn't going to allow him to get much further you may take the ball you may run past me but both <laughs> is not happening at the same time free kick in the centre circle to Wolves I'm sure he would have been highlighted in the uh, pre-match uh, meetings by Roy Hodgson and Palace because they wouldn't have seen him much. This is what he's about. He's a sharp player on the ball. Troy Ray wins his side a corner over on that right-hand side. It took two to defend him. Or has it come off Troy Ray last? I think it can. Yeah, the corner, uh, the um, cross, excuse me, cannon back off Troy Ray and went behind. So Tyrick Mitchell has passed the test so far. 13 minutes in, Wolves nil, Crystal Palace nil. Yeah, they're aware of the danger, obviously, of Adama Traore. They don't need no introduction to him and Jeffrey Schlupp doubling up with Derek Mitchell and doing a good job there. That they Block the cross, win a goal kick, and you t- from those positions, the only difficulty is you've got to do it time and time again because Jimenez is in there waiting for those balls because he knows it's coming. The stand-up to the back post with Jimenez <laughs> coming in. It. And it's a thing of beauty when it works out. I saw it live at West Ham United, and you know it's coming if you West Ham. But once they get into those positions, that it's very difficult to stop it, isn't it? Yeah, they did it again against Bournemouth, and you see the reaction of the Bournemouth players. They turned and looked at each other. We knew they were going to do this, and they still did it. Knowing about it and stopping it are two very different things. Palace throw, 10 yards inside the Wolves' half, taken all the way down that left uh, flank, and they win themselves... A corner kick. It was uh, Dendonka with the defending. Jeffrey Schlupp was in pursuit. And Palace on their left hand side, James McCarthy, who appears, hopefully for him, to have got over most of his injury problems over recent seasons. That plagued his career at Everton, the Republic of Ireland International. And he will take this corner kick. Scott Dan is forward, just by the penalty spot. Andros Townsend. It's just hovering on the edge of the penalty area. He can hit them from distance, can't he? It's taken, drilled into the near post. Nice idea. Jimenez, though, cleared on the volley with the right boot. Frustrating, isn't it? You bring all your big men up, you've got a chance. <laughs> a corner, a set piece to attack the ball and then hit it shin high to the man at the near post. You think, just that bit of quality, just that one time on the ball. Long ball forward, Dendonka with the header. And it falls here to Jeffrey Schlupp. Now we're... Uh, Wilfred Zaha, who scored an absolutely magnificent goal from distance against Chelsea. The only uh, game in the last six that Crystal Palace have scored in. That's probably their best performance of the six games. They were unlucky not to get a a last-minute equaliser. Scott Dan's header agonisingly cannon back off the inside of the post. But aside from that, it's been pretty poor from Roy Hodgson's side. Here comes Troy Ore on the counter-attack towards the corner of the penalty area against uh, Mabadou Sacco, who stood firm. And Troy Ore goes back out to the touchline to collect the ball. Tyreek Mitchell now back. Troy Ore to the byline. He stands it up to the near post. Sacco gets the header clear. And it's straight to Jordan Ayew's feet. And just as we say, the Traore to Jimenez at the back post. He chipped one into the near post of the first defender. Didn't quite get it. That one right, did he? He hoped Jimenez didn't read that. Long ball down the uh, left touch line for Crystal Palace. And Connor Cody happy to concede a throw on the Palace left. Halfway inside the Wolverhampton Wanderers half. In the 17th minute, Wolves nil. Crystal Palace nil. 
on a night, it's fair to say, light on entertainment so far in the Premier League. Judging by Ian Dennis, Mark Lawrenson and John Southall's reactions to the games that they watched a little earlier. Mind you, sometimes, Rob, at this st stage of the season, it doesn't matter if there's 50,000 in the ground, you still get some bad games, don't you? <laughs> it's that time of year, it can be the most interesting time, but then again, sometimes not. Um, yeah, it's, it's good from Palace, and what they're doing is, when, when Wolves are attacking, Ayu is taking up a really good position that he actually comes a little bit deeper than Will Saha, and sits sort of 10 yards deeper than, than the uh, Wolves' back line, and it allows the Palace players to clear the ball to someone, rather than a, sort of a, a wide hoof up front and a bit of hope you're playing it into someone in a bit of space and it's quite a clever play from him because it just gives them that out ball and that release the Wolves are building down the right hand side Neves finds the feet of Adama Traore standing start against Jeffrey Schlupp drops the left shoulder cuts in field decides that's as far as he wants to go back it goes to Dendonka and now Connor Cody just by the centre circle in the Wolves half Willie Bolly to the left touch line and Johnny, back in field it goes to Connor Cody, and there's the big diagonal switch out to the right hand side, this time it's Matt Doherty, brings the ball down nicely, finds the feet of Raul Jimenez but the ball back towards Doherty, the right wing back is too strong, rolls harmlessly behind, and whatever uh, Palace did defensively there Rob, mm. drew a nice round of applause from Ray Lewington and Roy Hodgson in the technical area. Oh, they just kept the shape. <laughs> they, they work, having worked with Roy Hodgson with England, he loves to do, do training with shape. And you will work in your shape every day, whether it's attacking or defending, you work with shape. I think Sacco's got a bit of a problem here, but yeah, Wolves, Wolves played it around, played from wing to wing and back across, and Connor Cody waited for his moment. And he had three men, he had Traore, Doherty and Jimenez, who all waited on that side, on the, on the wide right, knowing that he was going to ping it at some point, and they were waiting for that ball. Just didn't get it quite right, but I think, you know, I think Sacco's in, in a bit of bother here. Yeah, he's just pulled up, didn't he, when that ball was played through, and his immediate reaction was to look across at the bench and, and wag his finger as if to say, no, I can't continue. He's on his back at the moment, and the physiotherapist is just bending and flexing that left leg. He's testing his hamstring, isn't he, for whether he, can, whether he can resist or not. I think that's the modern way of testing their... Uh, the, the, the indicating back to the back to the bench now on the on the walkie talkies but uh, yeah this is not what they need I mean short on options on the bench aren't they Palace mm. they've, they've got James Tonkins and Gary Cahill both injured so yep. centre halves are in short supply right now they certainly are Gary Cahill injured against uh, his former club Chelsea We've just seen Roy Hodgson sitting on the bench biting his nails and Sacco still down on that far side Martin Kelly could come into the game. He's one of the defensive options. And there's some youngsters there as well who are yet to, to make their Premier League debuts. So we'll have to wait and see what they decide to do. Is the word, and I could sense it in your voice, Rob, the word shape. It just <laughs> it instills fear into footballers <laughs> everywhere, doesn't it? It's, it's, it is... The training session, players love to play small side in games. They love to have the competition, the, the element that drives you. That's why you get up in the morning. That's what made you a, a, a professional footballer. That's what it is. What they don't have is long attention spans. And so these are the, the shape, the drills that you do, the, the hour after hour, day after day drills that you have in shape. You, you want those, do you want those training sessions to end as quick as you can, but you're there and you know that you're there for a reason. And as when I was there for a goal, as a goalkeeper, you stand there and go, I don't move. I'm in the same goal. I, I do whatever it is, whatever they can do. When the ball comes, I'm just going to try and stop it. But you have, for the good of the team, you have to do it. And it has its benefits. And after so many years in football, Roy Hodgson knows what to do with football teams. He certainly does. But he's got a big decision to make here because Mamadou Sakho is limping up the steps towards uh, where Crystal Palace got changed in the bowels of uh, the stand that we find ourselves in here the Billy Wright stand so he's in conversation with his coaching staff here uh, Roy Hodgson but um, Mabadou Sacco has been withdrawn and it looks like one of the youngsters is going to come into the game or is he? no it's Cheku Kuate 
That makes more sense, doesn't it? I mean, he could slot into centre-back. He's played there before for both Palace and West Ham, hasn't he? It, it would make sense, yes. And uh, well, if, you, if, you, if you did bring on one of the youngsters, what you, you do, would have alongside him is another youngster, and that is, that is a really big ask when you half of your back four, one side is, is two young lads playing together. So, you know, he's gone from Roy likes his experienced players he likes to use his, the, the same guys the guys that he can rely on and, and why wouldn't you as a manager and at this moment in time it's 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 Koyate who's going to slide in and I think is it is Dan going to go over yeah Dan's going to go over to left-sided centre-half so you've got the experience alongside the youngster there to help him well because of the injury delay uh, the referee Peter Banks decided that was the time to have the drinks break so we're in the 23rd minute Wolves nil Crystal Palace nil Wolves forced into that substitution through the injury to Mamadou Sacco and Cheku Kuyate is into the game in the heart of that Crystal Palace defence and he may have some defending to do here but Joel Ward wins the header over the top of uh, Daniel Podence the ball falls to Joao Moutinho 33 uh, years of age now the Portuguese international now it's with Doherty on the far side infield to Ruben Neves back to the halfway line and Dendonka golden sunlight on the uh, orange seats in the Steve Ball stand opposite us not much breeze all the flags of the different nations hanging limply on the top of that stand on the far side with the spot beams uh, floodlights starting to take a little bit of effect and Wolves have a throw on their left hand side 20 yards inside the Crystal Palace half and Palace have not travelled well of late they've lost their last three away games by a combined score of 9-0 4-0 at Liverpool 3-0 at Leicester 2-0 at Aston Villa though they perhaps were a little hard done by to have Sacco's goal disallowed for handball via VAR Wolves switch the attack to the right hand side Adama Traore goes towards the byline gets underneath the cross and it's going to be difficult for Raul Jimenez to keep that in play he can't do so and it's a goal kick to Crystal Palace yeah it's good defending by Tariq Mitchell he just kept tight stuck to him and, and just didn't allow him that space to get the ball out of his feet and to get a good cross in and yeah it's you know, Palace again we're talking about the shape they just sit in they sit there they've got the two banks of four they know what they're doing they know where everyone else is and you don't know whether they're going to cause a lot of problems here for Wolves in an attacking sense but they, they look steady they look organised and you know they've, they've dealt with the loss of Sacco they've come out and Coyote's just slotted in and seems relatively at home Crystal Palace in the attack as a Palace player has gone down clutching his face right in the uh, the middle of the, the Wolverhampton Wanderers half so Ruben Neves will kick the ball out of play and it's Jordan Ayew well he was I thought clutching his face and now maybe it's the lower part of his right leg let's take a look at the replay here Rob yeah, it goes up for a challenge with Don De Dendonka and I just think it's, it's nothing. Oh, he lands on his foot. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's quite painful. That can be quite faint, painful, can't it? But it's always a telltale sign when a player holds his face and it's an injury somewhere else that actually he's not that badly hurt. It's <laughs> kind of, if you go down holding your leg when you've hurt your leg, you think, yeah, they, they might have an issue. But, no, he was OK. Well, he's uh, back on his feet, hobbling on that right leg, looking a little bit grumpy. Jordan, are you? Yeah, Dendonka came down on, his, on the top of his right boot, both having... Uh, had that aerial duel Nuno Espirito Santo just uh, outside his technical area with his palms raised looking at somebody out there and then turns away looking a little disgruntled now pacing around with his white trainers and his padded black jacket arms folded Johnny has the ball on the left hand side for Wolverhampton Wanderers nil nil here at Molyneux Jordan Ayew seems to be okay as he takes off in pursuit after Dendonka now it's with uh, Doherty the right wing back, Republic of Ireland international as well. Long ball out to the left-hand side to Johnny is a very good one. He brings it under his spell immediately, but then the return pass or attempted return pass from João Martinho didn't find its way back to Johnny. It was a bit of a scramble for Coyote to bring the ball under control. Eventually they get it clear, but then Wooly Bolly's given the ball straight to Wilfred Zaha, and he's got support coming forward through Jeffrey Schlupp into the penalty area. Left footed, oh, it's just wide. That's a terrific counter attack by Crystal Palace Wilfred Zaha finding Jeffrey Schlupp on his favoured left foot Willie Bolly just shaking his head ruefully he knows he was at fault there but the chance goes wide yeah he does brilliantly doesn't he Will Zaha he just makes it Bolly makes the mistake puts him under pressure physically and just puts enough pressure on him to win the ball off him he plays a square ball to Schlupp gets the ball out of his feet he does everything right doesn't he gets a shot across goal and 
showing a reaction of Roy Hodgson. He thought it was in. It went a couple of inches wider, the far post. Best chance of the game so far. So Zaha and Schlupp combining well. Jeffrey Schlupp's season has been curtailed by a, a hip problem that he suffered in December. Only one Premier League uh, sub-appearance since the restart, so he gets the start tonight. And uh, that was very, very close to a third Premier League goal of the season for the man who won a Premier League title, of course, at Leicester City. He started that season at left-back, and then Christian Fuchs took his starting position. Nil-nil at Molyneux, 27 minutes in here on Five Live Sport. And Jeffrey Schlupp with the best chance. Wilfred Zaha, I wonder what the future holds for him at the age of 27. He ended a 15-game scoreless run with that long-range effort against Chelsea. He's on 49 goals for Palace. Remember, he put a transfer request in last summer, didn't he? So let's see how that plays out when the season ends here's Zaha with his yellow boots he turns away from one challenge it's Moutinho who's trying to win possession back off him as he turned towards goal there were no options so back he goes to Kiyate on the halfway line now James McCarthy left footed side footed pass to Scott Dan now it's James McArthur out to the left hand side and the youngster Tyrick Mitchell and again it's Crystal Palace patiently stroking the ball around making Wolves do a little bit of work without the ball Ray Lewington very animated assistant of uh, Roy Hodgson in the technical area. Lovely little clip pass by Andros Townsend out to the right-hand side. He gets the ball back from Joel Ward via Wilfred Zaha. There's the cross into the near post and Rui Patricio gathers it first time. Jordan Ayu was the closest to it at the near post, but again, slick football, this time down the right-hand side by Crystal Palace. Yeah, it was a good play by Palace. and oh, what, the, the, the two wide players are just coming inside and making a box formation with the front two. And it allows the full-backs to push on. And they're playing nice little one-twos. And it, it was this time it was Ward to break down the right. And he was just too close to Patricio. But, you know, it's encouraging signs for Palace. Well, they are a side that's only scored 30 goals in the Premier League this season. Only Norwich have scored fewer. And they've failed to score in the first half of 27 of their 36 Premier League games. Jeffrey Schlupp came closest a few moments ago. Now in the centre of the park and it's James McCarthy and it's Wilfried Zaha into the penalty area on his left foot and then eventually crowded out by a couple of Wolves defenders including uh, Connor Cody. He had the chance to shoot on his left there, didn't he? He got that yard of space, got a good turn and just have a go at it. It's not your stronger foot, just, just, just have the confidence to give it a go because, you know, th those Wolves players want you to turn back. They're, the defenders are, are doubling up on him once by the time he'd come back and it, it, the chance had gone. Lovely uh, pass out to the left-hand side by Patricio, taken in stride by Johnny Otto on that left-hand side. He wins his side of throw, now Moutinho will switch the play chipping a lovely looking ball out to Adama Traore now it's Doherty back to Ruben Neves square across virtually the halfway line to Moutinho he brings Willie Bolly into the attack now to the left touch line and Johnny Otto looking for the feet of Raul Jimenez who was stretching out a left leg couldn't get there and Coyote sends the ball out of play for a throw in Jimenez just uh, sporting what looks like a, a cast on his left wrist a bright yellow Top scorer for Wolves with 26 in all competitions. Throwing taken by Johnny. He gets it back and then gives the ball away. That's Paul from Wolves. And here's Jordan Ayew and he's got Wilfred Zaha. If he can slide him into the penalty area, he's forced him slightly wide. Zaha with his back to goal, side of the penalty area for Crystal Palace. Lovely bit of skill. He brings uh, Andros Townsend, or tries to bring Andros Townsend into the game. Couldn't find his feet, but then MacArthur sliding in, makes sure that Wolves can't get the ball back. And here's Andros Townsend. Cuts back onto his left foot on the right touchline for Crystal Palace. It's Daniel Podence with that low centre of gravity, trying to ease him off the ball. He can't do so. Slip on the edge of the penalty area. The ball bouncing around. Then Donka lost it momentarily, but then rolls it quite uh, comfortably back to his goalkeeper. And Patricio plays it out to Doherty on the right-hand side. But Crystal Palace again looking dangerous. Yeah, a couple of enticing moments for Palace, and they're just getting that ball wrong, aren't they? That that choice, that decision, and it, this time it was Ayu with the through ball to Zaha, and it was, just as you said, just a little bit strong, a little bit wide, and the chance kind of goes. But yeah, like, when they get those two, three passes together, they get chances. Troy, all right, down the right-hand touchline, deep cross, and Podence with the acrobatics. It was a volley, it was half a bicycle kick 
half a scissors kick but it's gone over the top and Traore getting to the byline again and that's the back post cross that we often see towards Raul Jimenez he was at the near post in this move and it was Podence who had the opportunity yeah it was, uh, there was a cross earlier on from um, Traore that was deep and Podence didn't bother to go in he stayed out and it would have landed exactly where he should have been and this time he went in and he went for the spectacular and you know having watched him before this season I wouldn't put it past him to put it in but not not this time but I love watching him play he's so busy off the ball and when Wolves are playing it around with Matinho and Neves he's taking up different positions always looking always on the move just trying to see what he can do what he can provide 32 minutes in on five live sport Wolves nil Crystal Palace nil Wolves have yet to win consecutive home games in the Premier League this season would you believe for a team that's having such a good season they won last time out the flags up on the near side but uh, that'll be offside and a free kick to Wolves they won here against Everton last time out you were here for that one Rob by three goals to nil the last time they won consecutive home games was the final two home games of last season which I was surprised to read earlier today so when I said they're on good form at home I was talking rubbish <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, they haven't been beaten that many times. In that's, fact, that's are, what I meant. their home record and away record are identical. They're in good form in general. Yes. Yeah. Consistent, both home and away. Connor Cody has time. Then he's closed down by Jordan Ayew. Rolled it forward into the centre circle to Moutinho. Now it's back with Bolly. Now Cody again. He's looking for that long diagonal out to the right touch line to Traore. First time volleyed side-footed passing field towards Doherty, but it was difficult to deal with. And now Jeffrey Schlupp, who's had the best chance of the game so far, takes possession for Crystal Palace. James McCarthy offers that physical presence and calmness in possession for Palace in the centre of uh, midfield for them and here he is again now it's a long ball a looping ball over the top down the right hand side for Andros Townsend to chase but it's ushered out of play for a Wolves throw 10 yards in from the corner flag by Johnny Otto it's, it's interesting Arla because the, the Palace are allowing Connor Cody to hit those balls but what they're saying is it's, that when you hit them because we've got a winger and a fullback we've got two players against your one so we, we back our guys to, def to be able to defend the next ball. So what, if we keep our shape and we keep, keep sensible and we don't panic and we don't chase it, we let you hit that ball, we can stay in our shape and just move over and defend from there. So it's asking, it's asking Wolves a different option. Well, MacArthur has leapt with Moutinho and uh, it's a free kick. Moutinho is still down. Now, I'm not for one moment suggesting that this was intentional by MacArthur but I think there's been some contact with the elbow on the right hand side of Moutinho's face yeah both players have gone up neither looking at either each other they're both going up for the ball and it's, it's one that you jump and you raise your arms because you need to jump and, and he's just caught him but there's nothing to it no further action taken and now Podence is fouled on the left touch line and it'll be a free kick to Wolverhampton Wanderers it was uh, Joel Ward just diving in with the challenge right on the touchline. He was making you sure he wasn't going to make that second run, wasn't he? He's just, uh, I'm going to commit and I'm going to commit enough to, to block your run. Joel Ward's had a good run in the side. This is his 26th Premier League start of the season. Remember, he lost his place to Aaron Wambisaka, who was then subsequently sold to Manchester United. So Joel Ward back in the right back spot for Roy Hodgson's side. Here's Johnny. Trying to find Moutinho, fails to do so. One back by Wilfred Zaha, who's seen plenty of the ball in this first half. Tries a little flick to get past Moutinho. Still in possession and does well to swing a left-footed ball out to Tyrick Mitchell on the left-hand side for Crystal Palace. Into the Wolves' half of play. Jordan Ayew dropping a little deep to take possession for Palace. But they look a motivated outfit tonight. If anything, the final straw has to be professional pride. <laughs> we cannot put any more performances in like this they've got a tough assignment at the weekend at home to Tottenham Hotspur and regardless of whether you're safe or not ending a season with eight straight defeats does not bode well for the following campaign it's hard to just flick a switch mm. and go back to where you were before the, the losing run started presumably Rob yeah and he, as a as a professional you just don't want to lose you, you hate losing and uh, it, it sticks with you sticks with you through your week let alone you know and if you lose eight nine ten games on the bounce it sticks with you all summer so yeah they'll want something from these last two games it's a foul on andros townsend who was trying to get on the end of a, a long ball from scott dan he's ceremoniously dumped to the ground by johnny free kick and it's what about 10 yards outside the penalty area so this may be shooting distance 
for Crystal Palace. Yeah, Schlupp's just sprinted over to get the ball. He's interested, but I'm not sure he's going to take it. But it, there was no need from Johnny, really. There was no no one around him. Gone up for the header. It was going to fall harmlessly through to Patricio, but he decides to hand, elbow Andros Townsend in the back of the head. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think Andros, who's got a reputation for scoring from distance, is, is eyeing this one up. He's just got a furrowed brow as he peers towards Rui Patricio's goal. Referee... Peter Banks just sprays the white line just inside the D for the Wolves wall to line up inside of. A three-man wall, number 10, Andros Townsend with his hands on his hips, growing the uh, lockdown beard, takes it left-footed. Patricio saves low down to his left-hand side and he had to gather that mm. cleanly because RU was looking for scraps in the six-yard box. That's an uncomfortable little bounce in front of him as well. It wasn't the hardest shot in the world, but it's one that sort of lands two, three yards in front of you as a keeper and it can skip up onto your shoulder and bounce out onto the oncoming players and there were players running in, so it's good hands from him and he's, he's not had a shot to deal with so far. And you're 37 minutes into the game and you think, I haven't touched a ball with my hands yet and it's an awkward one for the first one of this game. Well, we talked about the uh, the quality of players that Nuno Espirito Santo has been able to bring into this club and the structure that they have here. From a goalkeeping perspective, Rui Patricio, mm. one of the better goalkeepers in the Premier League. Yeah, he's, been, he's, he's technically he's great, and it, it, it's great to watch because he, he has times where he, he like that he does something that looks simple, but he makes it simple. But then he can do the spectacle. He can he can do the acrobatic save as well. And also, having seen him, and in, in, you look at the, the continental keepers coming over in the first seasons, tend to find a physical side quite difficult. I, I watched him here at Bournemouth, and he he flathed, flattened Nathan Aki, and I says the goal, a former goalkeeper. You just sat there going, "Good lad, well you, done." You'll do me. You'll do me. Yeah. <laughs> Ball bouncing around in the Crystal Palace half. Wolverhampton Wanderers just struggling to get any fluidity in their attacking plays. A little layoff by Zaha looking for Jordan Ayew who acknowledges that he couldn't reach it. And Wolves have it back. Connor Cody at the heart of their defence again. Dendonka, side footy pass out to the right touchline and um, Matt Doherty. Neves spins around and finds his diminutive midfield colleague, Joao Moutinho, who's wearing white boots. Ball out to the left-hand side from Conor Cody, and it's a little bit sloppy from Wolves again. Ball out of play right on the halfway line on their left-hand side for a Palace throw. Yeah, Palace, the Palace are sat in their shape and they're saying, well, you know, you're 20 yards in your half, we'll stay 20 yards in our half and, and we'll just sit here and let you make the move. And at the minute, it's not working out for Wolves because maybe they just need to throw a few over the top, make a few make, make a few different passes, just something a little bit different that might make Palace think. Willie Bolly, who fractured his leg in training earlier in the season but has started the last 13 now, can seize the throw in. Joel Ward, 20 yards inside the Wolves half on the Palace right, he tries a, an extravagant chest pass in field towards Zaha, the ball's out of play again and Joel Ward just in front of Nuno Espirito Santo in the corner of his technical area takes a throw to the thigh of uh, Wilfried Zaha but he couldn't get the second touch in and now Matt Doherty who was eyeing a switch over the left hand side towards Jimenez but that uh, door was closed by Crystal Palace and it's patience and build up from Wolverhampton Wanderers through Moutinho left hand side is Johnny ahead of him down the left touch line is Raul Jimenez but again the shape and organisation of Crystal Palace forces Wolves to switch the point of the attack to the right hand side here's Adama Traore immediately under pressure as soon as he takes possession and he's forced back towards his own goal but then finds Doherty on the right touch line Traore again 10 yards infield back to the halfway line to Joao Moutinho here's Willy Bolly they're working hard here Crystal Palace if Wolverhampton Wanderers got the quality to get through them Johnny lovely ball out towards the left hand side of the uh, uh, right hand side I should say of the penalty area low ball came in didn't find a Wolves shirt but that's poor from Crystal Palace trying to work the ball clear Wolves have it back Moutinho chips it towards Doherty in the penalty area this should be the opening goal it's lovely and it is that moment of quality and it's Daniel Podence who scores his first goal for Wolverhampton Wanderers that was a delightful move and remember Wolves if they win tonight they go above Spurs into sixth place they've been under the cosh for most of the first half Palace couldn't take their chances and Wolves now lead by a goal to nil wonderful goal from Wolves and it's a brilliant bit of play from Moutinho spots the run from Doherty and he's 
Palace just, they looked they had the opportunity to clear it didn't take it ball comes back to Martino he's about 25 yards out rather than shoot dinks a beautiful little ball over to Doty who comes in toe pokes one across the six yard box and Pedence unmarked heads home into an open goal but as we were saying just that something of a little bit different that little dink chip ball over the top of the Palace defence completely opened them up and it'll be frustrating for Palace because they've defended so comfortably they've looked okay and, and it was just that one opportunity we're saying about Ayu standing in that hole for them to pass through they chose not to do it they've played a square ball across the box lost it two passes later it's a goal Vincenzi Guaita gave a real death stare towards Scott Dan after the ball went into the back of the net but Joao Moutinho's ball had to be perfect the little chip over the top it was and it wasn't the easiest ball for Matt Doherty on the half volley first time but it was utter perfection onto the head of Daniel Podence who had the simple task of placing it into an empty net. Here come Crystal Palace looking to re reply immediately. McCarthy shot his charge down, spins away down towards the corner flag. Johnny with a nice back heel to evade Joel Ward. Very calmly done by Johnny and Willie Bolly. Then Podence infield towards Moutinho. He was trying to release Jimenez down the left-hand side, but Coyate heads it out straight to his manager for a Wolves throw-in. And he just starting to grow in confidence and quality here Wolves who are aiming for Europa League football again next season well, you just see it when when Palace do attack they sense the opportunity to break and they think this is our time because we don't have to beat the 10 players stood in front of us we only have to beat two or three but didn't work out that time but he's looking again he's saying look at the clock it's 43 minutes gone you've worked so hard in your shape and to keep the game tight and then one mistake and that opportunity goes and it's a big test for Palace now because they've got a score no, they haven't done that a lot this season or since, since the restart well, Jimenez with a, a sloppy ball in field, and Bolly was forced to commit the foul on Jordan Ayew, so 10 yards inside the Wolves' half, uh, towards the right-hand side for Crystal Palace. Free kick is taken by McCarthy towards the back post. You can only find three Wolverhampton Wanderers defenders. It's launch clear down the right-hand side, and Palace have a throw on their left, 20 yards inside the Wolves' half. You've got... Scott Dan going forward for Crystal Palace and he's the only player above six foot tall and you've got you've got Bolly, Doherty, Dendonka, Cody stood there all waiting for this ball and you loft this ball into and you said thank you very much we'll have that and you just look at you think at some point it'll trigger in your brain the, the chances are you're not going to win this one. The percentage chance of that coming off is rather small against a, a very well organised and physical Wolves back line there's a foul on the far side you heard the shrill whistle of Peter Banks and it's Doherty who is penalised I think the challenge was on Wilfred Zaha who's just complaining about the severity of the challenge the upshot is a uh, throw excuse me a free kick round about level with the edge of the penalty area yeah, it's just again much like Ward did before with uh, Pedenzi he made, just made sure Zaha wasn't getting past him when he laid the ball off swung in right footed the heads go up, and uh, oh, you was close to it. It skimmed off a Wolves head and gone behind for a corner kick. Last 15 seconds of the first 45 minutes. It's a good ball in, but you're looking at it again, and there's four Wolves players up against Jordan, uh, Jordan Ayew, and he, he's just not going to win it. No, he's, again, but pressure from Palace. Right arm raised by Andros Townsend, who will take this corner kick left-footed. It's a deeper service. Bolly headed it clear under no pressure out towards the Crystal Palace left allowed to go out of play by James McCarthy I must confess Rob I've just missed the board to say how much stoppage time at the end of the first half Gary Flintoff and I look round to my right hand side both Rob and Gary saying three minutes with three fingers so we're into that now nil nil Wolves against Crystal Palace here on five live sport and uh, the whistle goes again and it's another free kick for Crystal Palace out on their left-hand side level with the edge of the penalty area. Yeah, just sharp feet by Jordan Ayew, just gets, a, gets to the other side of Martinho, gets past him, just a little tap of the ankle, make sure he doesn't go anywhere, but again, dangerous position, see if they can put a good ball in. Cleante's at the back post, so too Dan. Dan has pulled away beyond that back post with the... Uh, and the cross is flicked out towards the uh, touchline by Matt Doherty. Jordan Ayew trying to forage and retrieve it. He has done. He's on the byline. He's taking on defenders. Stabbed across towards the six-yard box. And it's cleared by Wolverhampton Wanderers. But they seem keener tonight, Crystal Palace. 
there's an urgency about them when they get the ball there's an urgency when it goes out for throw in and it's just proactive runs someone doing something just just make a difference even if you don't get the ball running behind do something they're doing that right now and on the ball look okay John Ward trying to find the feet of uh, uh, Jeffrey Schlupp it's cleared out for a throw in by Willie Bolly you know there was a banner hung on the gates by Palace fans before the Manchester United game last week they said end the season by starting careers play the youth it was urging manager Roy Hodgson to send out some of the youngsters as we've seen other teams do it's a foul by Adama Traore on Cheku Kuyate Roy Hodgson says look I've still got faith with my first team he's been forced into uh, Tyreek Mitchell's unveiling first start at left back and he plays a ball into Wilfred Zaha's feet he's claiming he was fouled and the referee agrees free kick just inside the Wolves half centre of the park for Crystal Palace it's also the opinion of the manager to decide whether these young players are good enough as well and he has been quoted as saying there's, there's one standout player and, and, and he's on the pitch right now so you know he's as good as his word he's given the guy, lad a chance in, in Tariq Mitchell but you know if, if Roy Hodgson who's had more experience in football than I've been alive you know the, the, if he feels that these guys are ready they're not ready you know then he, if you want someone qualified he stood right there he's yeah. in charge of your team and he's not a man known for stubbornness is he just to prove a point just seen a, a, a spectacular shot from the drone above us. It's just hovering above the Steve Bull stand. And uh, Wolverhampton has rarely looked as picture postcard picturesque as it does tonight. But that's the end of the first half. And Crystal Palace will be disappointed to go in at half time behind. Jeffrey Schlupp had a terrific opportunity. Left footed shot across Rui Patricio's goal and it missed the back post. And then the one moment of real quality from Wolves in that first half. Moutinho with a lovely little flicker, a, a chip over the back line to an advancing Matt Doherty. His first time half volley cross was just nodded in right in front of goal by Daniel Podence for his first Wolverhampton Wanderers goal they lead 1-0 Rob how just sum up the first 45 minutes I'm sure Palace will be really frustrated they've kept the shape they've done well they've, they've been organised and they've limited Wolves but they go in a goal behind to the one chance they did concede and it was avoidable so frustration for Palace for Wolves oh, they haven't been amazing they haven't done anything but true to form they're winning and they've, they've, they've been you know within themselves to win, win so far but Mark Chapman, we've had a goal. Wolves won. Crystal Palace nil. Yeah, 30 seconds into the second half here, Mark. Uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers won. Crystal Palace nil. Courtesy of a Daniel oh. Podence goal. Lovely nice uh, goal it was. Nicely created down the right-hand side between Moutinho and uh, Matt Doherty who's trying to keep the ball in play now with his head and does so on the right touch line looking for Adama Traore a volley pass by Jimenez finds Neves Neves challenging with uh, Wilfried Zaha and Zaha with that number 11 on his back is very slow to get to his feet does so eventually with the bright yellow boots on and they've started with some purpose here Wolves long ball over to the uh, left hand side and Johnny gets the cross in and it wasn't far away from Jimenez and da uh, Scott Dan uh, had to clear away for a throw in on the far side Rob Green lively start to the second half by Wolves yeah fantastic ball by Neves and he was, was a great run by Johnny and, and Jimenez didn't believe that he was going to get there and he, he sort of gave up on it and if he'd have made the run across the near post like he's done so many times this, this season then he would have been in and it has a chance uncharacteristic for Raul Jimenez but uh, he was on his heels ever so slightly there and let's have the ball back no changes uh, to either side so Wolves with Patricio in goal, a back three of Bolly, Cody and Dendonka. Uh, the wing backs are Doherty and Johnny. Uh, Moutinho and Neves in the centre of the park and a front three, Adama Traore who's in possession. Raul Jimenez, 26 goals in all competitions and Daniel Podence who has the game's only goal so far. He was trying a little combination on the edge of the area with uh, Jimenez but then the, uh, the ball makes its way to the goalkeeper. Guaita, who clears towards the halfway line. Crystal Palace, Guaita in goal. Back four of Ward, Dan, Kuyate, who's on as a substitute because Mamadou Sacco uh, had to go off injured in the first half. And a first Premier League start for Tyrick Mitchell, who's uh, acquitted himself pretty well so far. Central midfield is James McCarthy and James MacArthur. The wide men, Jeffrey Schlupp on the left-hand side, who missed Palace's best chance of the game so far. Andros Townsend has been busy on the right-hand side. And then Wilfred Zaha and Jordan Ayew are the attacking two here's Ruben Neves square ball to Raul Jimenez towards the penalty area takes a left-footed shot 
And they're claiming ooh, either handball or a foul on the edge of the penalty area. The shot was charged down in the end. It was a decent opening by Jimenez. All still in possession. 1-0 they lead as the floodlights start to take dominance here after a lovely evening in Wolverhampton we've both gone for the jacket option in the second 45 minutes Adama Traore looks to stand it up to the back post and he was backtracking Guaita and he was worried Podence was coming in at the back post and Scott Dan had to deal with it it's a corner yeah it's good defending there and he just headed us to safety but Podence was lurking wasn't he and Guaita Traore's seen it so many times stands it up over the top of Guaita who's got his back he's got square to the ball and he's back and he doesn't know what's behind him so panicking a bit Dink wasn't quite sure needed the header behind and uh, a threatening one for, for Wolves I'm not sure that cross didn't curl out of play before uh, landing around about the, the far post but the assistance flag stayed down and it's a Wolves corner on their left hand side Podence is at the back post uh, the centre backs are forward and it's swung in towards the edge of the six yard box and it almost found the head of Raul Jimenez it was headed clear just in front of him uh, Palace looking to bring the ball clear. There's a foul and Palace survive. 1-0, they trail Wolverhampton Wanderers in the 50th minute. He's got such a threat from set pieces, Martino. And, and the brilliant thing is the Wolves players know exactly where the ball's going and they attack it in numbers and they attack in a line and the timing's perfect. And you, you can see them go, we're going to go now. And that is so hard to defend against. If you're going man-to-man -man and you're on a foot race against these guys and they all go at the same time, it's so, so difficult. It's like a, a poor poorly social distance queue <laughs> at a bus stop isn't it <laughs> at the uh, back of the penalty area uh, Peter Banks the referee has blown he wants a, a word with somebody Dharma Traore has just limped away from a challenge and I think it's uh, Scott no it's James MacArthur isn't it who's having a bit of a talking to here after that challenge I don't think he'll get a yellow card it's uh, Wilfred Zaha is across there as well I think Zaha's just showing a bit of fr frustration. He just got bumped off the ball before, and it's, uh, he's been one, two, three times in the first half. He got fouled, and he gets fouled so often, doesn't he? I'm sure it's so frustrating for him. As it stands, by the way, Wolves will be back above Spurs into sixth place with a game to go. 59 points against 58 points. Uh, Chelsea are away at Liverpool on Wednesday night. They are the opponents for Wolves on the final day. Now, what a fascinating dynamic that is as Jeffrey Schlupp brings the ball into the Wolves half on the left hand side found, finds Wilfred Zaha he's just possessed by Matt Doherty and Wolves can build from the back through Matinho but he is clattered into by James McCarthy and we've got a couple of Wolves players down in separate incidents and it's Ruben Neves who's clutching his left ankle by the looks of things the other Wolves player has got to his feet but Neves has got his left hand a tattooed forearm over his eyes now he's dragged to his feet which is a good sign by Dendonka but no he doesn't want to doesn't want to stand up here Rob does he no I think he's just being helped to his feet it's a bit a little bit reluctant to get back up is his ankle but both mid, the midfield duo took bangs on their ankles there and uh, you know both hobbling away a bit but uh, both okay looks like they're going to be absolutely fine Rui Patricio with the ball at his feet to take the goal kick outside of his penalty area but what a dynamic I mean Chelsea if they win at Liverpool they have Champions League football on the back of reaching the FA Cup final as well. Liverpool are getting the trophy on Wednesday. They don't want another performance like they've been putting in recently against the likes of Manchester City and at Arsenal. They'll want to turn it on even with no fans there. You don't want to get beaten on the day you get the trophy. So if Chelsea weren't to win that game, all of a sudden, it's very, very interesting on the final day. A lot is going to depend on Manchester United and if they can beat West Ham United and if they do so by how many because their goal difference is level with Leicester City and then at the King Power it's Leicester against Manchester United on the final day so this is absolutely fascinating it's as fascinating as it is confusing I've gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll leave it to the final day and look at the, look at the table then here it comes down the right hand side through Doherty but he pinged the ball in towards the chest of Adama Traore there's no way he's bringing that under control now Palace send a long ball through McCarthy down the left hand side to Wilfred Zaha corner of the penalty area loses his footing but retains possession does he? yes he does and then he's fouled and it's a free kick to Crystal Palace and uh, Nuno Espirito Santo wasn't happy with the award of that free kick but Peter Banks just waited for time and waited for play to go on. He got back to his feet, Wilfred Zaha, and then was unceremoniously hacked down. It's a free kick. 
Yeah, it was a game run by Will Saha, just running down the channel, wasn't it? He just slipped there and, and, and basically held the ball between his arms and his legs. It wouldn't allow a Wolves player to get near it, and then got up and carried on a bit, and then got bundled over. And the Wolves player showing their frustration that, that, that he was basically just lying on the ball. So dangerous one for for Palace. They've, they've got a real good opportunity here to just need to find one of their taller players against one of the very few small Wolves players. 53 minutes in, five live sport. Wolves lead Palace by a goal to nil. And it's curled across by McCarthy. Just needs a flick. It was a terrific service and well defended by Wolves. Right on the edge of the six-yard box. The merest little flick from a Palace head. And that could have flashed past Patricio into the net. But Wolves stand firm. Now Zaha at the back post is getting involved. And it's off him last in a challenge with Matt Doherty. And it's a goal kick. Wolves Zaha disagrees with that decision. Yeah, good couple of bits of defending there from Wolves. One from Doherty the second time round, just putting what Zaha under enough pressure to bundle it off him out for a goal kick. And then before that, the free kick was a good one. It was a good quality ball in asking the question. And Wolves dropped as a unit. They dropped as a line and were there on mass to clear it. And it was a really dangerous ball in. Well, that may be a claim by Zaha that the ball actually came off the arm of Matt Doherty. We've seen uh, Wolf with Zaha slip a couple of times. I think. The kit man has been dispatched to the dressing room to go and get some uh, new boots, maybe for Wilfred Zaha. He's come out and re-emerged with two pairs that he's just laid down by the uh, the dugout down to our left-hand side. Here's Adama Traore for Wolves. He was fouled, advantage being played by Jeffrey Schlupp. Podence in possession out towards the left touchline. He had Joel Ward defending in front of him, so he slips the ball back to Johnny. And Wolves retaining possession across the halfway line. Cody, diagonal to the right-hand side to Matt Doherty. He was looking with the header for Jimenez, and it's clear by Scott Dan. Throwing to Wolves on their right-hand side. Yeah, I think a bit the evening dew has uh, caught out a few of the players here. It's, uh, yeah, well, do we say it hasn't really settled down yet, do we say, to say it's not been a high-quality start to the second half? Johnny was in all sorts of space on the left-hand side of the penalty area. Podence took the wrong option there he would have been clean in on goal and Nuno Espirito Santo turns around and has a little word with one of uh, his coaching staff a little bit frustrated and we've just seen a, a picture on our monitors of the two pairs of boots maybe it's like a tyre change isn't it in Formula One oh the, he's been sent back for another pair out comes a third pair maybe these are for different players though the whole team's getting them changed <laughs> good news for the sponsors to get a bit of extra uh, exposure here at Molyneux tonight, 55 minutes gone, nil-nil. You know Spirito Santo, it's an interesting situation. He has 11 months left on his contract. Ball's out of play for a Wolves throw just short of the halfway line on their right-hand side. And they're such a well-run club, and it appears to be working so well when he took over. They won the championship to get promoted, then finished seventh to qualify for the Europa League. Now they're aiming to get back to sixth place tonight with a game to go. Still in the Europa League with harboring ambitions of maybe winning that competition. But you know, one or two Wolves fans may be a little nervous that he's got just 11 months left on the contract. Willie Bolly with defending to do over on the left-hand side for Wolves. He's fouled by Jordan Ayew, down by the corner flag. Free kick to Wolves. But uh, Espirito Santo says, I've got 11 months left. We have to focus on what we're committed to. And when you sign something, your obligation is to see it through. So there's no suggestion at the moment that he intends to, intends to see the contract out and then leave. But I think Wolves fans would like to see something signed. Yeah, it's been such a wonderful progression by the club, hasn't it, under him and un under his stewardship. And uh, you, you think of managers who are synonymous with clubs and now you, you look at him and in this modern-day Wolves team and, and it, it resonates everything about him and, and it's likewise with the club. So you're looking at it and you think there's, there's always seems to be a less urgency with managers, doesn't there? Traore with a nice bit of play and he found Doherty on the right-hand side but that was a rather floaty cross it didn't give Jimenez much chance and it was easy for Guaita in the Crystal Palace goal and here's Andros Townsend brings it back to McCarthy sent down the right touch line headed back into the Palace half by Willie Bolly and then just thumped and unceremoniously out of play by Crystal Palace for a throw-in on the left-hand side to Wolverhampton Wanderers just inside their own half earlier tonight Brighton nil, Newcastle nil and Sheffield United nil, Everton won, Richarlison with the only goal. So Everton are 8th, excuse me, 11th, Sheffield United are in 8th place. And that point mathematically guaranteed Brighton's Premier League safety for another season. And in the cricket, 
England beat the West Indies on a thrilling final day by 113 runs, bowling the Windies out for 198. The full story in the Test Match Special podcast, wherever you get your podcast, and on BBC Sounds. Fouled by uh, Jordan Aryu. Did you <laughs> this scream of anguish from Aryu and frustration, frustration towards the referee? Yeah, yeah. it's just frustration. It was a great turn by Martino, clever turn. Just Aryu working so hard for the team, chasing, 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 and just a clever turn, and he's beaten, and it's just pure frustration. Here's Willie Bolly on the left hand side for Wolves. Now Ruben Neves is moving okay after. I mean, that left ankle clattered a few moments ago. Another diagonal from Cody out to the right-hand side. Brilliant header won by Triore to find Podence. Triore is into the penalty area. Tight angle, shoots. Guaita saves. And that was Jimenez foul. Podence gets the shot away. It's deflected behind for a corner kick. And in the end, Guaita stood firm. And that's the best chance of the second half so far. First Triore, then Podence. It's a corner. Yeah, Triore with it. It's Connor Cody with the ball out to him. And... Tariq Mitchell commits to the header and doesn't win it and then Adama Traore senses the opportunity heads it inside gets the return ball gets it in, in on goal and drills it out to eat his feet he makes the save two Palace players but fall into each other in trying to clear it and then Podence gets a shot off it gets blocked for a corner but good play by Wolves he's saying it's a scrappy start to the second half first bit of quality was there boot update Wolf Zaha has swapped some yellow ones for some black and white ones the corner comes in he's flicked towards the back post and that wasn't far away at all Raul Jimenez is claiming he's come off the defender last and it's going to be a corner from the opposite side Joel Ward I think got the last touch on it yeah it's a great ball in again by Matinho whip and dip and Ward didn't know whether he was going to get there had to get something on it didn't know where he was heading it and headed it pretty close to the far post well, it would have been an amazing finish from him if it had gone in but again away for a corner and it's that quality by Matinho that little bit of class on the ball that you see He's 33 years old, Joao Moutinho, and he's just trotting across now to take this corner kick. And one of the key battles in that penalty area is Joel Ward against Raul Jimenez. Jimenez with the socks at half-mast, just outside the six-yard box, hands on his hips. Looks like uh, he's rather lethargic, but uh, he'll burst into life as soon as this ball is struck by Joao Moutinho. Podence offers a... A shorter option. It's clipped in towards the near post. Not the best service by Moutinho since we've uh, given him the big up there. <laughs> a few death, wasn't ago. it? Yeah. <laughs> but so it's, a, it's an interesting battle in there. You're looking at uh, you're looking at the guys who they've matched up, and you're looking around and. Bolly's up there and, and uh, obviously Jimenez but then Duxy's up against Schlupp and he's got the advantage and you think well if I'm going to if you're going to isolate two guys as a Wolves player you, wanna, you want those two so I'm surprised he hasn't gone to Duxy more for that, for that far post header Night falling in Wolverhampton an hour gone and Molyneux and it's Daniel Podence's first goal for Wolverhampton Wanderers in the first half that separates these two sides and as it stands at the moment Wolves will be back into sixth place with one game to go with a one-point lead over Jose Mourinho's Tottenham Hotspur. And a reminder that sixth place would be guaranteed Europa League football. Seventh place, whoever finishes there, would have to hope that Chelsea beat Arsenal in the FA Cup final. So Arsenal fans may still uh, see their side win a trophy, win the FA Cup and potentially knock Spurs out of European competition next season. So a double whammy for them. Motivation. <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. No, I was going to say you're looking at the second half, and you're just looking at the the sort of the quality that's coming and, and the, the quality from the Wolves players, and it's not been free flowing, but it's there, and you can see it's there. And you, you're asking these Palace players, have you got that quality? Have you got that something to change the game? And so far in the second half, you've seen precious little of it to see for the, for, for any sort of response to the goal. Wants to have a throw halfway inside the Palace half. It's taken in field towards Neves. He just lobs the ball up in the air. He was looking to, I think, work it out towards Matt Doherty. Has a second attempt as well, and that's uh, uncharacteristic from Neves. Two poor passes from him, and the ball's out for a Crystal Palace throw in. It's, it's easy to forget, I think, Rob, as well, that Wolves' season started on July the 25th of last year against Crusaders 
of Ireland in the Europa League qualifying rounds. That's 360 days ago. Yeah. And he likes to pick a consistent <laughs> starting 11, doesn't he? He doesn't change it right. He has a, he has a small squad. And, he, and it works. You can see why it works as long as everyone stays fit. You know, you, you don't have to upset people. You don't have to have all these headaches. You don't have, you know, you pick the guys, you make them believe in themselves, get out there. They know the jobs, just go out and play. And if everybody stays fit and it's been remarkable how, how they have managed to do it and it, it's been it's been a brilliant season for them because it's been such a long one Podence was fouled by James McCarthy Peter Banks must be tempted to get a yellow card out at some stage Podence looks in tremendous pain clutching his right leg down on the ground and the yellow card does come out for James McCarthy just a yard off the pace wasn't he there and a ball into Podence who takes up such good positions we talk about there he was in a pocket McCarthy couldn't get there and a little bit of frustration there. you've seen Will Saha being spoken to by the referee now a little lash out there with a kick and you know, it's frustrating for these Palace players because they just you know, when Wolves do get the ball sit down and when they do play they're just a yard off the pace with them Podence back on his feet just hobbling slightly but he's Looks fine to continue, and he darts towards the penalty area for a quickly taken free kick. It's not taken. Crystal Palace defending in a line a couple of yards outside their penalty area. Taken short to the right-hand side to Adama Traore. Two, three step overs. He might run out of room. Well, he manages to wrap his right foot around that. He got a cross in. It took a deflection off Tyrick Mitchell, but you think he's running out of room, and all of a sudden he can hock his foot around the ball and send in a dangerous service into the penalty area. It's well defended by Crystal Palace, though. 64 minutes gone, and they trail by a goal to nil. Yeah, Tariq Mitchell did well there because it's like you say, it's easy to convince yourself that he's run out of room and he's run out, run off the end of the pitch, and then all of a sudden he gets across in. So he didn't stop. He carried on going. He got an important toe in, which allowed the centre half just to be at the near post and, and gather it up. But you know, it's it's a tough evening for him. He's got an, you know an explosive player to play against, a clever player to play against, and you know he's equipped himself well. Apart from that that one header that he committed to allowed a Dar to ha to have that chance. And here is Mitchell in possession and he rolls it forward into the feet of Jeffrey Schlupp a nice bit of skill and footwork from the former Leicester man and then uh, Crystal Palace earn themselves a free kick it's uh, Jordan Ayew who's been fouled from behind by Connor Cody now he's got the first card out Peter Banks he quickly brandishes a second this time to the Wolves captain Jordan I just getting he, he's, he's just laid the ball off and Connor Cody was at a little bit late and oh, he's gone down screaming Connor Cody's just a shrug of the shoulders to say are you for real or oh, I hardly touched you and it's uh, yeah he's hobbling away now I think it was another stamp on the foot which uh, he got in the first he half did, which he? He, he, yeah. he doesn't appreciate right no, now no he's uh his right foot has taken some punishment, Jordan Ayew, tonight. It was Dendonka who landed on the top of it after an aerial duel in the first half. He's just on his haunches on the edge of the D, uh, maybe just sorting his laces out, but he's hobbling heavily on that right foot. That is uh, stinging Jordan Ayew. Here's the free kick, curled over, left-footed by uh, Andros Townsend. He was looking towards the back post and Cheku Kiwatu, but the ball is out on the right-hand side, corner of the penalty area. James McCarthy gets the ball back in again, and it's a flicked header back towards his own goalkeeper, much to the relief of Rui Patricio, with some uh, attacking talent bearing down on him in this six-yard box. I think it was Dendonka that got the flicked header in. Meanwhile, at the other end, out of his goal is Guaita, and it was charged down by Podence, and the ball will go behind for a goal kick. But that was a nervy moment at the back for Crystal Palace. End-to-end -end stuff. Yeah, this, that's what we talked about in the first half where Palace get, uh, Wolves get the ball, sorry, and, and they when they get the ball and the Palace have been attacking, they know they've got the option to go forward quick and they don't have to beat that two banks of four that Palace have. And it's a long ball from um, Patricio, a great ball because it, it allows Pedence to make that yard, those yards and Gaeta commits, he comes out, gets there just about first into the foot of Pedence and it could have gone anywhere and it went up and harmlessly over the bar but it would have been heart in his mouth for a moment. Here's MacArthur who nods the ball back into his own half to Scott Dan. Who returns the favour. MacArthur to the left-hand side to Tariq Mitchell, but his pass is intercepted by Matt Doherty, who finds his teammate Willie Bolly. Down the left-hand side for Wolverhampton Wanderers now comes Johnny, the left wing back. He's got Mutinio as an option in field. He goes out to Prudence on the left touch line. Adama Traore who just lurks menacingly on this right-hand side for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Tyreek Mitchell now is uh, 
touch tight to him the ball is into Trio's feet beautiful first touch he turns towards goal on the right hand side of the, uh, the penalty area wriggles in between two defenders then shows his strength the ball here breaks to Johnny on the left foot then the right foot then finds the back of the net oh, it's a brilliant finish by Johnny Otto wonderful skill by Adama Traore from a standing start he wriggles between two defenders finds Johnny initially on the left foot then spun around 180 degrees and planted the ball in the corner Wolves are heading back to sixth place in the Premier League with one game to go Wolves 2 Crystal Palace nil. Wow well, this is why everyone's scared of Adama Traore that the bit of skill and the bit of pace he's just up against Tariq Mitchell and he's helped out with, with the cut by McCarthy there and uh, he's, he's doubled up and he manages to get between the two then burst past them both plays the ball into Jimenez Gets it across to Johnny, who does brilliantly. He takes one, two, three, four touches with his back to goal, just looking for an angle, looking for just a way to get a shot on goal. And he manages to do so, turns his defender, just swivelling shot, falling over into the far corner. A wonderful goal. And you're looking at it now and you're saying we've had two real moments of quality in the game. One from Matinho, one from Adama Torre to create the chances. And... You look at Palace and can you come up with two real moments of quality to get yourself back into this game now? And is, you feel the life of you saying you, you, we've been playing for nearly 70 minutes now and you just can't see it. Well, the drinks break, the second drinks break has been taken. And you know Espirito Santo who always celebrates Wolves mm. goals by turning around and embracing his fellow coaching staff. And then we just saw a replay of a smiling Adama Traore with Johnny Otto in a headlock. And it's 10 Premier League assists now for Adama Traore. And he's just electrifying. When he gets the ball, there are no fans here. If there were, you can imagine the Wolves fans straight to their feet in anticipation of what he's going to do next. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to watch. And you, you, there's, there's some players who can do it, who can stop and then start and go and go at an electric pace when they start. And it's so hard for a defender because you've got to react and you go from running, 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 stop. Run, and you have to go again and that explosive player just power isn't there and when you have that as an ability and you know how to use it and that's what we've been talking about with Terrari is, is learning how to use it where and when and in what positions and you know you've seen him do it and he's, he's just oh, I was just having a little chat with him now and you just sit there going, you can imagine the conversation going oh, I can do that in this team <laughs> I just don't get the opportunity but uh, yeah it, it was wonderful play well, Crystal Palace are heading for a seventh consecutive Premier League defeat unless they smarten up pretty quickly. And they've only scored in one of their last seven games, including tonight. It doesn't bode well for Roy Hodgson's side. We're back underway. Here's James MacArthur. He rolls a ball forward into the path of Jeffrey Schlupp. It's a poor first touch. He allowed the ball to run on, and that enabled Matt Doherty to get the challenge in. It's a lovely ball over the top to the left-hand side to Daniel Podence. He's got Cheku Kuyate, and Podence goes down. I think he feels he's been fouled here by Kuyate. And interestingly, Peter Banks then makes a quite a late decision to award a free kick to Wolves on the left-hand side of the penalty area. Oh, it's right over on the uh, far side of the pitch. So as we look at the replays there... And there's not a lot in it I think he's just got a little kick in his hamstring and, it's clumsy and, isn't it yeah Coyote's just probably a little bit tired now tired legs and takes away wafts a leg at the ball and just catches the back of Pedence but it's uh, not a lot in it but uh, again the referee kind of waits I didn't know whether he got a word from the one of the, the, the his assistants to tell him what, what, that, that he was a foul but he waited and waited and then gave it and yeah you're looking at again Martino in a, in a really good position to put a good ball in but uh it's, uh, yeah, we're just seeing a replay here of uh, the first goal from Matinho and it's just that little dink over the top. It's a beautiful ball, isn't it? And it's yeah. such fluid football, such liquid football. That you, you, you watch it and it must be a joy to play in those scenes when you've got a player like that and you make those runs and you're going, yeah, just find me. And he can do it. It must be brilliant. Well, Daniel Podence, who was dumped to the ground a few moments ago, has been replaced. And it's uh, Diogo Jota who comes into the game. Who scored last time out here against uh, Everton in that 3-0 victory and now there's going to be a change made will they get it in before the free kick yes I think so by uh, Crystal Palace and Jairo Riedewald will come in for Jeffrey Schlupp it all could have been very different for Crystal Palace in the first half Schlupp dashing into the penalty area tight well not that tight an angle but uh, it was a left footed shot aimed at the far post that was narrowly wide that was at 0-0 the chance was lost and now Crystal Palace are 2-0 down with 18 minutes remaining and 
The free kick by Moutinho swung in. Bolly with the attempted header. And now Jimenez back to Bolly. Trying to smuggle this one clear, Crystal Palace. The ball was bouncing around on the edge of the six-yard box. And then Cuyate launches it forward with his right foot. Neves just hooks the ball forward high into the night sky. Dan with a header back towards the halfway line. Neves with a volleyed pass out to Doherty. And uh, the high press is on momentarily here for Crystal Palace. Hooked forward. Dan with another header. Here's Traore. The attempted foul by McCarthy. Traore stabs it through looking for Jimenez. And it was desperate defending by Crystal Palace on the edge of the penalty area to prevent Jimenez from going straight through on Guaita's goal. Ball still with Wolverhampton Wanderers. Here's Neves. He has Jordan Ayew approaching in behind. He rolls it back to Willie Bolly. Now out to the left-hand side to Johnny. That was his second Premier League goal of the season for Johnny Otto. And his first since notching at Newcastle in October. In the 74th minute of Molyneux on five live sport. Wolves 2, Crystal Palace 0. Yeah, it's a passage of play there from, from Wolves. And, and they realise they sense they're under a bit of pressure. First Neves and then and then Connor Cody. They're under a bit of pressure. And they just put the foot through the ball. And they, they pick their times to play, which is so good. They stand there, they understand, they know the game. They think, hold on, we're two nil up. We don't need, we don't need to play perfect football all the time. We're not under any pressure to do anything. Let's just clear our lines. Let's keep the clean sheet. And they did that. And because they've got the strengths up front, that the ball eventually drops them, and then they can play when the pressure's off. And now they're just keeping the ball very never at the heart of it, just bouncing it around in midfield, and it's and it's all very comfortable again. The stocky little figure of Daniel Podence. He's still hobbling a little bit, has just grabbed a, a water bottle, no more than 20 yards in front of us. And uh, it's a, a job well done for him, his first goal for Wolves, he'll go back to the dressing room. He's started three in a row now, eased into the first team picture after signing from Olympiakos in the January window. Here's Jota for Wolves, right hand side is Doherty, Jota made a run in towards the penalty area, looks annoyed that Doherty didn't provide the cross. Edge of the area here on the right foot is Adama Traore, low effort, it was straight at uh, Guaita, who had to gather that first time with Raul Jimenez looking for any rebound. Yeah, it's just a step over from 25 yards out. Riedeval gets loses his foot in, probably not up to speed of the game, certainly not up to the speed of Adama Traore, and uh, gets his strike away, cries out in anguish, at, and because he knew that that was a chance, it's a great opportunity to get a strike, and didn't really connect, and it's a comfortable save by Keita. Dan sends it forward for Crystal Palace, then Donkers attempted clearance, only finds uh, Wilfried Zahart, he was looking for the far post with a curling effort, side-footed effort, but it was far too straight and easy in the end for Rui Patricio. Yeah, long hopeful ball forward, it's then Donker just makes the wrong option, we're saying about just clear the ball, he didn't, didn't do that, he just he played the ball back into Zahar and... Zahars gets into, into the box, a little bit of space, and you're looking for him to open it up, and that just that touch out of his feet wasn't far away from him. It wasn't far enough away, I should say, and it just uh, didn't allow him to open up and to feed it into the far post, and he ends up scuffing it into Patricio. Well, Wilfred Zaha is approaching the point where he either commits to Crystal Palace or maybe seeks... Uh, a challenge elsewhere, we'll have to see what happens in the summer, but 27 years of age now, Wilfred Zaha. Rudevald looking for Jordan Ayew, who in turn is looking to get into double figures in Premier League goals, but he won't reach that one, and it's behind for a goal kick to Wolves, 76 minutes on the clock, Wolves lead Crystal Palace, if you're just joining us here, by two goals to nil. Dark skies above us, the bright spotlights on the roof of the Steve Bull stand on the far side. The tower block, which in normal times when it falls dark, you see people working late at the office, but all the lights are off. It's in complete darkness up there. And it looks like Wolverhampton Wanderers are heading back to sixth place in the Premier League table. And at the moment, Palace are heading for a seventh consecutive defeat. And it's off, off the back of a decent run. Just before the lockdown, they won three in a row without conceding a goal. And then won their opening game of the restart down at Bournemouth by two goals to nil. Uh, and since then, it's been a sorry tale. And Wolves have a free kick on the left-hand side of that uh, Crystal Palace penalty area. Foul by Scott, no, Joel Ward, excuse me, on Diogo Jota. Yeah, Palace getting a little bit stretched now, a little bit tired, try, trying to chase the game a bit. And the, the shape's going a bit... and. The space is 
just about coming up, coming to appear for Wolves now, and and they've got such good players to exploit that space and such willing runners that you can see in third goal coming. Can they make one of these set pieces count? Moutinho is over it, right-footed. Doherty is out on the far post. He's the intended recipient, but in the end there was too much flight under that and it was easy for Guaita who throws the ball out to Zaha. He's shoved into by Traore and I think he thought about playing an advantage there, the referee. Traore though penalised for the foul on Zaha, free kick to Crystal Palace and Wolves about to make another change. I think it's Pedro Neto who's going to come in and as Traore talked his way into the uh, into the referee's book there, he's shown a yellow card. Yeah, he was frustrated there because he actually did quite well, he held up Zaha and... and got a foot in and, and won the ball and won it off Zaha and it, I think it was more of Zaha's stump, stumble that got him the free kick and uh, yeah a little bit of frustration you're thinking well you're tuning a lot you, you don't really need to what's there to get frustrated with yes it's it's a decision that went against you there'll be more in your career that might happen and uh, just move on but uh, yeah slamming the ball into the ground is a is a you know a really is a green light for the referee they'd love those they love to give a yellow card for those <laughs> And it's another foul on Wilfred Zaha and it's another free kick here for Crystal Palace Pedro Neto is ready to come into the game he's just in the uh, dugout with his right boot on the first step getting some instructions about set pieces on a clipboard from one of the coaching staff meanwhile Andros Townsend is over this free kick it's about 15 yards inside the Wolves half they are defending about 5 yards outside uh, the penalty here on the edge of the D they drop back now it's hooked over left footed easy though for the Wolves defence who can now counter attack and here's Diogo Jota he finds Neves and he will be fouled by Kuyate sensible foul by Cheku Kuyate just to prevent the counter attack although Neves has stayed down and he's grimacing again and clutching that right ankle that's seen a bit of uh, punishment in the game or well, particularly in the second half well it did look a little bit yeah, a little painful, bit of a, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. Down the ankle, wasn't it? A little bit of studs down the ankle. They're always painful. And uh, yeah, they, these, these, what do we call them professional fouls or taking one for the team. They come into, they've come into the game now about every two minutes or so because neither team want the other one to break because they realise that they're so dangerous. Palace are stretched because they're chasing the game. And all, Wolves, well, they're two nil up. They're cruising. One thing they don't want to do now is concede and make it a nervous last 10 minutes. Doherty wins a header on the right-hand side. Into the Palace half it goes. Then Traore is fouled by MacArthur. <laughs> and as if in unison, like a synchronised swimming team, Ray Lewington and uh, Roy Hodgson turned around shaking their heads in exactly the same way at exactly the same time. Here comes Pedro Neto. Who for? Will he, will he make this substitution before the free kick is taken? It appears that they might do. Just waiting for the board to go up now. Nuno Espirito Santo is pointing to somebody and it's Traore who makes way. I'm always a bit disappointed when he goes off. <laughs> he's box office, isn't he? he yes, is. yeah. No, he, he's, he's one of those players and he provide, uh, showed it tonight that it can just do something out of nothing, create something. And for that second goal, just the stop-start um, skill that he showed and it is a wonderful bit of skill and beat two players and, and the layoff was there and it, it's, a, it's a great goal to watch and he's a great player to watch and he's just so exciting and one that yeah it, it's a shame that no one's here to, apart from us to watch it really yeah. all we can do is describe it and he's just walking well, 10 feet 20 feet or so down beneath us carrying his uh, tracksuit top and his bottle of water he's getting high fives from Morgan Gibbs White and the other uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers substitutes he is uh, a physical specimen and a highly skilled player Adama Traore, one of the stars of the Premier League so far this season and I'm sure Wolves will be very, very keen to keep hold of him for next season as well. We are in the final 10 minutes, 81 on the clock that's uh, shining in bright orange, the scoreboard away to our left-hand side and Wolves lead Crystal Palace by two goals to nil. Palace have only scored 30 all season are well, they going to add to that at some point tonight their league low in their history is 33 they did it in 2013-14 and in the early 50s in the third division south and there's never been any doubt about their Premier League survival this season but they've done quite a lot with very little in terms of goals yeah, you, you defensive resilience I think they've uh, built their season on haven't they it's, uh, it's not been the, 
it has not been the flair and the goal scoring that's for sure yeah 1950-51 division three south 33 goals and then in the premier league and they survived then as well in 2013-14 I think he's just shown precious little up front, haven't they, this, uh, tonight and uh, in previous games. And you're looking at it, and Wolf well, Saha, you talked to him about, about it before, and what's he going to do with his career? Where's he going to go? He cuts a frustrated figure, doesn't he? He cuts a forlorn figure in, in, in this team at, tonight, at least. And, and it's one way you can say he's got such quality, but when it, he can be targeted at times. And because he is the main man of this team to provide something because they haven't got that second third fourth option like you all so you and your teams with more strength in depth in attacking options and you know you kind of look at it and say well if we nullify him we nullify crystal palace and it must be so so frustrating for him because yeah like you say he he's a hometown boy he's playing for his hometown club and he loves to be loved and he loves them to be part of the area and, and that sort of everything fits but on a footballing level it must be frustrating cody long down the right uh, side of the penalty area and matt doherty brought the ball down with his chest quite nicely and tyrick mitchell has conceded uh, the corner kick well jordan are you is the top scorer with nine goals for crystal palace he costs 2.5 million pounds which by premier league standards is not an awful lot of money christian benteke costs a little bit more than that he's suspended tonight after getting that red card after the final whistle at aston villa that doesn't help it doesn't help does it no. that sort of ill discipline but he had it hardly had a prolific season had he christian benteke so connor wickham is out on loan last i heard at sheffield wednesday so the attacking options outside of Zaha and RU are few and far between. Corner kick for Wolves. Moutinho will curl it out with his right foot. Neto's there with the short option. Both arms raised. He goes short to Neto. Right corner of the penalty area. Works a move for a cross with his left foot out towards the byline on the far side. The header comes back across from Doherty, but it's behind for a goal kick. Well, that's that ball we were talking about to Doherty to the far post, wasn't it? It was just a little bit too strong for him. Right idea. He was there alone. He was unmarked and he had the opportunity to get it across, but just a little bit too strong, a little bit too high and went out for a goal kick. But yeah, again, when you've got a player like Neto coming on, you've got Matinho on Neto, you've got two players who can right foot, left foot, great quality on the ball. MacArthur clips it forward, looking for one of his uh, attacking options but it's easily dealt with by Wolverhampton Wanderers and here comes Johnny down the left hand side for Wolves infield to Jimenez throw back here patience for Wolves Neto on his left foot he's got Doherty on his outside Riedewald is the defender right corner of the penalty area spins away from a couple of challenges stamps it towards Doherty calmly played along the line of the penalty area to Moutinho Doherty has it back Moutinho here I think they're quite comfortable at 2-0 they're not necessarily breaking a sweat to go for a third here Wolves it's all about game management here at the moment seeing out this uh, victory and then heading back to sixth place as I say that then Donka sends a lovely ball out to the left hand side and Johnny's got a bit of room to manoeuvre here Jimenez right arm raised in the penalty area pointing to where he wanted it ball goes back to Neves clipped in towards Jimenez and Neto's at the back post as well neither made any contact Scott Dan was the defender who went to ground and it's behind from a Palace point of view safely for a goal kick yeah, there's a great ball in and there's two players Neto made the run behind the back of Mitchell and we're just looking at McCarthy he's, he's cut a really tired figure there he's just trotting back 20 yards behind play his legs have gone he's got nothing left to give and he's he's supposed to be tracking Neto into the box he's fresh he's lively they've been keeping the ball for the last two minutes and he's been chasing around he just couldn't do it he's gone and I, and I think that's that sums up this Palace team they've, they've tried hard they've been game but he, you know he's just been too much for them yeah he certainly has and Neto excuse me Neves gives the ball away as we speak to uh, Andros Townsend in the centre circle what are his options well he had players ahead of him but went back to Scott Dan now here is MacArthur tight to the touchline on the left hand side for Crystal Palace through the legs of Doherty he finds Riedewald in a promising position on the left hand side he hangs across over towards Joel Ward he wins the header will it fall here for Zaha on his left foot Wilfried Zaha brilliant block in the penalty area and eventually it makes its way into the arms the very relieved arms of Rui Patricio but that was a good opportunity for Zaha 
And it was blocked, I think, by Willie Bolly. Yeah, there's, there's the strength of the Wolves team. That he was a foot cross to the far post, met by Ward, and comes to Zaha. He has the opportunity to sh shoot, but with the three centre halves, what you get is these, the defensive numbers in the middle when the ball does drop. And yeah, he goes there. He, he get, Bolly gets across, makes a block, big big block with there to keep the two goal lead. And we are in the very late stages here at Molyneux. Dan facing his own goalkeeper turns away from Guaita. Jimenez got the challenge in, but he found a teammate. And here comes Mitchell down the left for Palace. With two and a half minutes remaining of the 90 here at Molyneux. And Patricio sprints off his line, slides along the turf and gathers that attempted through ball and it looks like the points are going Wolves way and they will go back to sixth place they're going to make another uh, change late on in the game here who's coming on it's Bruno Jordao who will get on for a little late run here in the 37th game of the Premier League season and I think I wrote down somewhere it's Wolverhampton Wanderers 59th game of a season that's lasted 360 days so far and they will face a slight issue if they go deep into the Europa League which they'll hope to do um, they'll play either Sevilla or Roma if they get through the second leg against Olympiacos there may be Man United in the semi-final of the Europa League the start of next season all of a sudden the turnaround is pretty quick and if they qualify for the I don't know how UEFA are going to structure the Europa League, but if they qualify for a qualifying round, then the, the turnaround is going to be so, so short for a team that's just had a season over a year long. You, you're qualifying for a tournament that hasn't finished yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a strange end and a strange restart to the season, but you're looking at these players, and you, you're looking not just at Wolves, but a lot of the players across the Premier League, the top players who are going to be playing straight into the back of... Uh, the start of the new season then straight into the Euros then straight into the next season then a World Cup and so you've got all these uh, these difficult sort of conundrums that people are going to face logistically on, on, a, on a physical level the players are going to be back to back seasons and back to back games and it's just going to be such a big ask that they'll be looking at the lockdown and thinking God what a nice time that was <laughs> Throw into Wolves on the right-hand side, taken by Doherty. He was looking for Neves. It's Cheku Kuati who steps forward in the centre circle to win possession back for Crystal Palace in the final minute of the 90 here, 30 seconds remaining. We'll look at the board in a moment from the fourth official. And Bruno Jordao is still waiting to come into the game. There's another Wolves substitute. Lofted down the left-hand side by Willy Bolly. Straight to Scott Dan. It looks like another fruitless, scoreless evening and pointless evening for Crystal Palace who are heading for a seventh consecutive Premier League defeat here's Neves chest the ball down in the centre circle finds Matt Doherty now all eyes will be on the fourth official's board as that is thrust into the sky and it says in a bright green number three three minutes of time added on at the end of the game here Pedro Neto on the right hand side is screaming for the ball Johnny into the centre circle to Neves Here's Matt Doherty, now is Neto, who scored a couple of goals earlier in the season. He thought he got his first Premier League goal at Anfield, but it was disallowed by the length of his big toenail, I think. It was one of those millimetre calls via VAR, and he scored in the following game. Here's MacArthur, last chance really for Crystal Palace to do anything in an attacking sense. Zaha finds Joel Ward, back to Zaha just inside the Wolves half now McCarthy out to the left touchline and Tyrick Mitchell back to James McCarthy we've had a minute of the minimum of three added on the switch is on there for Crystal Palace towards Andros Townsend headed clear by uh, Johnny quick throw in taken by Palace here's Townsend again He's got Moutinho ahead of him, tries the right-footed cross, it's got plenty of air underneath it, looking for MacArthur, defended well by Doherty, and then tidied up very nicely by Dendonka. But uh, his ball only finds Scott Dan, McCarthy. Is it a late consolation for Crystal Palace, trailing by two goals to nil. Wilfried Zaha running across the penalty area. Now, Riedervald, number 44 on his back. Kuyate to McCarthy. McCarthy on the left touchline finds Mitchell. Down the line, the flag stays down against James McCarthy. To the byline, the cross is in. 
Connor Cody with the header, falls to Tyreek Mitchell, edge of the area, back to goal is Wilfred Zaha, tries the shot, it's a good one, but it's straight at Rui Patricio, and I think Nuno Espirito Santo is a little annoyed that he was allowed to get the shot away, it was struck beautifully by Zaha, but too straight. Yeah, as you say, it was just too straight, wasn't it? And it's a good strike. I think he'd run out of options, run out of ideas, really. Palace, had best bit of possession they've had all game, really. But Wolves are comfortable. They've got every ball that was coming in. They, they headed it away, cleared it, and they've, they're now cruising to, to three points. And, and another impressive performance for for Palace. You know, you, you're going to ask Roy Hodgson, what have you learned from this game? What have you gained? And I think the one positive you, you could say is Tariq Mitchell, and he, and he hasn't looked out of place. You know, he's, he's provided suitable sort of substitute for for Palace to come in and and, and you know an, an able replacement. So they've got one for the future, one that can play. And other than that, you're clutching really at, at, at positives to take from it. Closing seconds here at Molyneux. We're in the 93rd minute now. Long ball forward from the corner of his own penalty area by Neves, and then has Kiate pulled back? Uh, is that Jota who's gone to ground? It was a long ball over the top and Chiarte was struggling, but referee Peter Banks blows the final whistle. And it's all over at Molyneux. So Wolves go back into sixth place. They will play Europa League, guaranteed Europa League football next season, if they win at Chelsea on Sunday. Yeah. Chelsea may need to win that game themselves to secure Champions League football. The less said about the end of the season at Crystal Palace, the better Mark Seven consecutive defeats. They've only scored in one of them. Full time here at Molyneux. Wolves 2, Crystal Palace nil.